And this is Maginone, and here's some comic reviews for you. I'm going to be kind of short with some of these because, I mean, there's a thicker stack, but some of this stuff doesn't really need to be talked about too much. Uh, first up is Grizzly Shark Returns. This is kind of like in the vein of Sharknado. It's really violent. Uh, it's basically killer sharks that fly out of nowhere to eat people, and uh, they kind of like go on land, and you can see the fin going through the like the grass and there is also uh, at the end here um, the bear shark grizzly shark I should say so it's just full of nonsense and it's just kind of like a funnish violent type breed if you like sharknado there you go Jupiter circle number six I really like this this is kind of like um, imagine Superman, you know, he's living his perfect life, he does everything perfectly. And it basically eventually gets to his wife, who basically is like, I can't be with you any longer because you're perfect. I can't live up to that perfect standard any longer, I just can't take it. You know, I need somebody normal, I need somebody who can uh, make mistakes, who's procrastinating, you know, just with people with faults. And you just kind of watch him progress with this, with what happens. Now, it, it's not like it's a really long, they spend a lot of time with it, but as a whole, it, it, it's just enough time. And it has a interesting resolution, I guess you can say. I really like the cover for this, too. Guardians of the Galaxy number eight. You know, I really, I really hated this issue, and it's not for... It's for probably different reasons. It's because it's it's basically the Guardians are going to a planet uh, that's being run by the Badoon. That you know, it's like a slave planet, and when they land there, it's a bunch of scrolls, and it's like super scrolls. You know, they have like powers of the various superheroes. You know, from Civil War, and they're all trapped on this planet. They they can't even shape change anymore. And we're supposed to feel sorry for them. But, you know, scrolls aren't historically the bad guy. So it's really hard for me to feel sorry for the bad guy in this case. So that's why I'm like, I'm at odds with this book. But it was all right. It just wasn't great. Especially when you look at other books this week. It was just average to below. Ultimates number seven. I really, really enjoyed this book. The art was great. Uh, Captain Marvel is dealing with the Shar, and they're like, well, you guys have another cosmic cube going on over there, and they're trying to use that against them uh, for diplomacy, so to speak. And so Captain Marvel has to look into what's going on. She's totally pissed off what she finds out, and everybody's favorite bad guy shows up at the end. And no, I don't mean Green Goblin or Dr. Octopus, but that's your clue as to who that is and it's definitely setting up the stage for something big coming up overall i really enjoyed this issue ultimate this ultimates has just been fantastic it's kind of like a slow moving book so to speak you know there's not a lot of big waves but there's enough stuff that's going on in here that's built slowly building and i, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next all new x-men age of apocalypse well, this is what I can say about this. As a whole, I haven't been too happy with the Age of Apocalypse storyline. Uh, but this does have Kid Gladiator in it, so it does earn some points. Now, to me, this feels a little bit more like a tie-in, so to speak. Because it's dealing with Kid Apocalypse. It's dealing with mutant, mutant hatred. It's dealing with how he has to always smile because he's afraid if he shows his true emotion, maybe he's sad one day. Maybe he's a little bit indifferent. People are going to look at him going, oh my god, is this the trigger that's going to cause him to snap and become the evil, evil apocalypse? And things kind of go out of control from that. So that's why I'm saying this is more like, like a true tie-in than uh, like a, some of that other stuff. Like, oh, we're going to the future and we meet the four horsemen in the future. Ah, who cares, you know? It's just a bunch of writing and artist fanboy over who they want to see, which Marvel character they want to turn into the next Four Horsemen. But overall, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like what I would consider, again, like a great book this this month. 
Gwenpool number two. Basically, Modok sends Gwenpool and the other assassins, which she quickly discovers is a Dungeons and Dragons party. They have the healer, they have the magic user, they have the thief-ish, and they have Gwenpool as the tank. And along the way, during their assassination mission, they meet Lady Thor. Now, to me, I'm enjoying it, but it's like a weird kind of enjoyment because, yeah, they're trying to be just like Deadpool, and it's I don't think it's succeeding like Deadpool, but I think it's an interesting story enough in the sense that this girl is trapped in this situation, and she, I mean, she's not Deadpool, you know, she she's not like the Merc with the mouth, and, you know, it's kind of like things are out of control, so to speak. So that's what I'm kind of more interested in versus the humor. Now, there is humor. It's just not as funny. But anyways, overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, I can see where there's going to be a bunch of people like who are just going to write this thing off. And I wouldn't blame you if you did. But it, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, anyways, this is the haul for the week. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Let me know what you guys uh, like the most, what you didn't like. And we'll have some more stuff later. So until next time.